The first two speakers in this session started their, started their academic relations with Schmeiler in the 20th century. And the next speaker, Shiri Alon, who is a faculty member at Tel Aviv, Uni at the Bar Ilan University, completed her PhD with David Schmeiler in 2012 and started her academic career at Bar Ilan University in 2013. She's an accomplished economist and decision theorist, and also not only a student of David Schmeiler, but also a co author of David Schmeiler. Please, Sherry. David was uh, my PhD advisor, and it was a pleasure and an honor to work with him and to have him as my advisor. I learned basically everything that I know about decision theory from him. This is my uh, research area, was in my PhD and is until now. I learned everything about decision theory that I know from him and also a lot about research in general, uh, how to be careful and thorough and not to jump into conclusions, which I tended to, to do in the beginning. And he taught me how to, be, to work more slowly and more carefully. Uh, and I want to talk about uh, social choice under uncertainty uh, and a subject that David uh, worked on uh, together with Tzachi Gilbo and the uh, Dubi Summit. Uh, and Eddie Carney and Tzachi Gilbo prepared a little bit for me all the background, so that's good. So the basic, the basic question here is how to make decisions for society. Okay, so the question that I want to talk about is, suppose that you have a society that is composed of different people and different people may have of course, different preferences. And a social planner, a policymaker, needs to make decisions for society and somehow needs to take into account the preferences of the members of society, or at least we wish that a policymaker would do that. So a very simple example you may think about is that you need to decide as a social planner whether you want to build a library or a park, okay, and there is uh, all kinds of preferences in society. Some people want one thing, some people want the other. And you need to find some consistent way of what we call aggregating these preferences, okay, and making one preference for the entire society. So uh, that's the basic question. And um, maybe the most um, accepted and standard <laughs> principle that usually guides uh, social decisions or the um, the principle that we, we wish that a social planner would adopt is the Pareto principle. And it means simply that if everybody in society prefers option A to option B, we would expect the social planner to take, to choose, to choose A, okay? So if everybody is in consensus that A is better, so just do A. It sounds very straightforward and undisputable. Uh, but still, it turns out that it works really well when it, there is no uncertainty. But if there is uncertainty, an uncertainty of the type that the two talks before me discussed, so uh, uncertainty of the form that I may choose an alternative, but I'm not sure what will be the consequence of this alternative, then things get complicated. So if just an example about global warming, maybe I'm considering building a park, but I'm not sure what's going to happen with global warming. Maybe in two years, it will be so warm outside that no one will be able to use the park, okay? So maybe there is some uncertainty involved, and this makes things complicated. So how complicated? Um, and I'm trying to keep it very not technical. Uh, so suppose that uh, all the members of society and the social planner, they make decisions following the very classical uh, way that we suppose in decision theory under uncertainty. So they use personal tastes and subjective probabilities that were mentioned, and they compute the expectation, okay, the expected utility according to subjective probabilities. So everybody has their own tastes, their own beliefs, quantified as probabilities, and this is how they decide. Okay, suppose I want to, um, to assume that. Okay, that's the standard assumption. And also, I want the social planner to satisfy what I call the Pareto principle, 
Okay, so I want the social planner, if everybody wants A over B, to choose A. It appears that, it turns out that these two things just don't work together, okay? There is a result, a very famous uh, result, that there is impossibility here, which means that I can't really have both things. If I try to do that, something doesn't work, okay? It's impossible to aggregate the preferences of members of society in a consistent manner. And uh, just recently, Tzachi told me that um, David found this to be uh, a difficult problem because uh, if, you, if you believe that ideas are important, then uh, this may give justification to policymakers to just do whatever they please. Because if we have a result that says, okay, you can't anyway take into account the preferences of members of society in a, in a good way, okay, because you can't even satisfy Pareto, then just do whatever you want. It may justify arbitrary decisions. So this is, this is a problem, this impossibility result, and uh, the, uh, the paper by Bitsachi, uh, by Dubi Summit, and by David um, addressed this problem and tried to restore possibility, to see if there is some consistent way to aggregate preferences that will be still uh, reasonable, okay? and get rid of this impossibility result. See what really drives this result and how we can uh, fix it, okay? So I'll tell you an example that appears in their paper. It's a very neat example, very clean, and I think it gives the idea beautifully. So if we have this impossibility, the two things that don't, don't work together, it means that if we want to somehow restore possibility, we need to give up one of the two either the classical uh, representation of preferences or the Pareto principle. We should at least relax something, okay, because it doesn't work together. And they have an example in their paper that shows that maybe the Pareto principle, even though it sounds very straightforward, okay, if there is consensus in society, just follow it, it sounds very appealing, then under uncertainty, it may not be so appealing, okay? So, the example that they used was the example uh, of a duel. So uh, imagine two people that you have that are considering a duel. They, they consider fighting a duel. Each of them obviously wants to win, okay? So each of them prefers the consequence of winning, but also each of them believes that he's going to win. Therefore, both of them uh, prefer to fight the duel than not to fight the duel. Okay? So we have a consensus. If, if we look at the society of these two people, and now we consider a social planner, the social planner, seeing consensus in society, if we want the social planner to uh, satisfy Pareto, the social planner will need to prefer dual to not dual, to no dual. And this doesn't seem so appealing. And why not? Because we have agreement here, we have consensus here in the society of the two people, but this agreement is, seems like it's a, kind of a false agreement because it's based on double disagreement. Their taste, the taste of the two people here, are opposite. Each of them wants to win. And also the, their beliefs are opposite. Each of them believes that he is going to win. So it turns out that eventually they both prefer the same alternative of do to no do. But this agreement is actually based on double disagreement, okay? So it's not very appealing, and the, and the problem here is that we have two layers, right? And we have the uncertainty here. So uh, in their paper from 2004, what they uh, suggested to do was to keep the assumption about the representation of preferences, so still the preferences of members of society and of the social planner are represented by the classical way of subjective expected utility, personal tastes, subjective probabilities, and the computation of expectation. But they don't require the social planner to satisfy Pareto. Only in some cases, not always. And actually only when it is uh, based on some true agreement, okay? So they don't require the social planner to satisfy uh, Pareto when it is based on this kind of double disagreement like in the, uh, in the dual example. 
but they do require the social planner to satisfy it if there is true agreement on probabilities and then uh, there is consensus in society. In this case, as it feels like the, uh, the consensus in society is genuine, it's not based on just things canceling out each other, and then they do require the social planner to satisfy it, and the result is that possibility is restored. So it is possible to aggregate the preferences of uh, members of society under these assumptions. So it was a very uh, encouraging result that uh, by giving up the kind of Pareto that is actually not very convincing, it turns out, under uncertainty, uh, possibility is yet again, uh, we, we can aggregate preferences again, okay? Uh, yeah. This example is very helpful, but it brings out the question, is one of them wrong? You have a very clear thing, one of them is going to win, <coughs> one of them is not going to win, so just one of them is stupid. <laughs> okay, right. So just maybe one point that I didn't, didn't say. At least one, yeah. So I don't know if this, if this is helpful, but one thing that I didn't say, that uh, if we insist on Pareto, the standard, if we insist on, on Pareto, <coughs> the full-fledged Pareto, not this one, not the limited one, then we, we say to the social planner, you must satisfy, you, you must prefer dual to no dual. If we don't insist on Pareto, he can still, or she can still choose whichever option uh, he or she wants, okay, right? Dual or no, or no dual, it's open, but we don't, we don't uh, make it compulsory. It's not that he, that he or she has to choose dual, okay? But when, when will we uh, um, require that Pareto be satisfied? To, so, for instance, if both of them agree that it's 50-50, oops, if both of them agree, I, I'm used to moving around a lot. If both of them are 50-50, okay, if both of them agree that it's 50-50, that each of them wins, then probabilities are agreed. If they still want to prefer the duel, if they, if they still prefer the duel, they still want to fight it, then the social planner will have to prefer the duel as well, okay? If, I mean, they really do want to fight it, even though they know there is a 50-50 chance that they'll win, then it's okay. Then it's based on agreement. But I, I, I agree that the, the, the essence here is that they can't both be right. So something here, this thinks one thing, the other thinks another thing, and at least one of them is wrong, and they don't genuinely prefer, they, they don't genuinely agree on something, okay? So, still, still it is left open. It's not that, we t that, that the social planner cannot prefer the duel, but doesn't have to. What is the state of the world in this example? Either one wins or the other. Um, so, I'll just mention another paper by uh, David and Tzachir that was uh, already mentioned here, the maximum expected utility, and how uh, I used it with a co-author of mine to uh, combine both these uh, notions of the uh, social choice under uncertainty and the possibility that is restored when you relax uh, the Pareto requ requirement and the notion of ambiguity that, that was already uh, mentioned. So uh, in the paper of uh, Zahi, David, and Dubi Samet uh, from 2004, this is the paper they just showed, uh, they take different people in society, different uh, members in society, and the social planner. Everybody is supposed to decide according to subjective expected utility, so based on subjective probabilities, okay, computing expectation. Which means that um, the social planner, and, and again, aggregation is possible okay, because of the relaxation of the Pareto principle. And uh, this means that based on the probabilities of, of the individuals in society, of members of society, the social planner is supposed to form uh, a probability and then decide according to that probability. Again, a single probability. And uh, 
what we did is take the idea of, uh, of ambiguity, okay, of, of um, maybe not always we know what is the probability that we want to form, maybe we're not sure, and, uh, and plug it in here. So uh, the idea is that um, if a social planner faces many uh, beliefs in society, many subjective probabilities of members of society, maybe this thing, the multiplicity of beliefs in society, generates ambiguity. A social planner facing many possible probabilities may not be willing to commit to just one. So maybe a social planner in, under these circumstances would like to entertain multiple probabilities, consider multiple probabilities as possible. And if that is the case, so maybe on top of that, a social planner that is supposed to be accountable of his or her actions and uh, be responsible to the implications for the entire society would rather be cautious. Okay, so if there are multiple probabilities that are possible, then maybe considering all this probability, the, the right approach for a social planner is caution. And um, a model that exactly does that, okay, exercises caution in the face of multiple probabilities is the Max Min uh, model of uh, Tzachi and David, which uh, basically without saying anything too technical, um, evaluates alternatives according to the worst case over all these possible probabilities. So uh, this is just a combination of two uh, of David's papers together with Stachy and, and Toby. And I think that was the last one. Okay, that's not too important. Never mind. Okay, thank you. <laughs>